very, this is a very pertinent debate, and I would like to say thank you to everybody that made it possible, the college sector, six forms, and the UCU union, and members of the public who uh, have ensured that we're hearing it today. It's something that is very close to my heart and the community that I represent's heart, as we have recently witnessed the very direct impact of 16 to 18 funding cuts in North West Durham, because last year, Walsingham School was forced to close its doors, uh, its six form doors to local pupils. Uh, we hope temporarily. But it's a very serious situation indeed. Of course, many factors were cited, but essentially it boils down to the fact that rural schools, uh, which is well loved by the community, were starved of funding for many years, particularly at the top range. Age range. Uh, in another part of my constituency, management and staff at Derwentside College are working incredibly hard to maintain standards in the midst of relentless real-term cuts to their budgets and decreasing per-pupil funding. In addition, Derwentside College, because of its large number of apprentices, have been disproportionately hit by the effects of the apprenticeship levy, whilst well supported across the board, has been bureaucratic in its implementation and hit numbers in key areas. All of this uncertainty has taken place in the context of real-term pay cuts for the incredibly dedicated staff and I have no doubt that this picture has been replicated across the country. And I have to say that Derwentside College is a wonderful college, so warm and welcoming, and it's extremely important for my community that this resource is kept, because it's a place of safety, of refuge, and the harshness of everyday life, where people can come and they can study, they can learn for, for their future. But I have to agree with the intervention of a member before that I genuinely think that the government don't really care about further education. Uh, and I think it was pointed out earlier that it's disproportionately working class students that engage in further education. And perhaps that is why there is little care for that sector. But the crisis has been coming for many years, and the government has been warned over and over again that sixth form funding for 16-year-olds uh, has been frozen uh, for the years 2013-14. For 18-year-olds, it was reduced to 3,300 in 2014-15. But there is no logic or justification for these, these cuts or the levels of funding. And it's hard not to conclude that further education has just been an easy target. The sector is now beyond stretch. I, I would say it's at breaking point. Uh, in real terms, funding for 16 and 19 education has declined by 22% since the coalition government was elected. And over the same period, there has been an increase in student numbers and a decrease in the numbers of teaching staff across the sector. So sixth form colleges have been trying to perform miracles, and I think enough is enough. The government needs to understand very clearly the result of these cuts. So courses are being stripped, restricting the options for my constituents in, in my community, what they can entertain as their future careers. And an inadequate transport system, which is very, very expensive, and I keep banging on about this, but transport is pivotal to people in my community, means that they can't easily just travel elsewhere for their education. Staff workload is increasing, and because of austerity and cuts elsewhere, and uh, you know, in public and uh, public health services, colleges are seeing increasing uh, students with mental health and well-being difficulties. And it's no wonder, is it, when poverty is entrenched. I know that some people go into that college and they've got no food in their bellies and they've got no money to buy any food. And those lecturers, those dedicated staff, make sure that those young people have got a meal in their belly so that they can study. That, that isn't accounted for in any spreadsheet, in any funding formula. They make sure that those young people have eaten so that they can study. And while some schools have been allocated funding uh, to deal with mental health problems. I know it's still not enough. Colleges have been left out in the cold and, 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 and have not had any additional funding for that. And the same goes, let, let's think about the, the, the staff. According to UCU Union, college pay has fallen in value by a quarter since 20, sorry, 2009. In cash terms, that translates to 2,484 pay cut on the bottom point. This is a shocking and disastrous way to treat professionals in that sector. Teachers in, in education colleges, on average, earn about £7,000 less than a teacher in a school. And the result 
Well, of course, it's no shock that since 2010, an approximated 24,000 further education teachers have left the sector, and a third, uh, that's around a third of the total workforce. Across the country, students and their families, the communities they come from, and their future employers really value the work that colleges do. If only the government would listen, never mind asking them to then love colleges. The context, um, and I suppose the crux of the matter is this, and it was mentioned before, and I really agree with this point, that the snobbery around further education colleges has to end. They are as important as any other sector. Sixth form, the Sixth Form College Association claims that in order to increase, increase student support services to the required level, to protect minority subjects and to increase non-qualification time, for example, extracurricular activities, the government would have to increase national funding for 16 to 18 year olds by £760 per student per year in the 2019 spend and review. That is the bare minimum. That's just to stand still, just to survive. I suspect for a more expansive view of the college sector, we will need a change of government and that can't come too soon for this sector.